Hello everyone, Okiansky here and welcome to Scripting Suggestions where I'll be making new projects or modifying old ones based on feedback that I receive from you guys in the comments. Basically I'm just going to be reading uh, some comments that I've received and trying to show you guys in Roblox Studio how I would go about those ideas. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this first comment comes from Chuppa Chups who asks, if we can make a street light that turns on during the night but is off during the day. And this comes from my lighting cycle video. Alright, so here I have quickly built a model city to demonstrate this. Um, I've gone ahead and organized it into city, uh, my buildings, my roads, and my street lights. Each street light is a model and it has a light part like so. And as you can see, they all have lights under them, if you can see them. I should turn the lighting, if I take the lighting clock time and just slide it around, I can change it from night to day. And as you can see, um, when it's night, those are when they should be visible. And when it's day, that's when they should be off, right? So um, each, each street light has a surface light. And if I go ahead and the simplest way to turn off a street light is to play with its enabled property. If it's set to false, so it will be off. And if it's set to true, it'll be on. You could also set the brightness to zero, but we'll be using the enabled property. Okay, so I'm going to be making a script that just reads the clock time and decides whether or not the street light should be on or not. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add a script into server script service. And I'm going to call it street lights. And right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and make a table called street lights. And I'm going to be able, I'm going to put every single uh, street light, street light surface light inside of this table. So I'm going to do that with a for loop. All right, so I've uh, iterated through my city that streetlights uh, all of their children, and then for each one of those streetlight models, I'm going to insert into the streetlights table and insert that uh, surface light object, which would be this one right here. So if I go ahead and do print um, number of streetlights. I should get, um, however, I should get 12. So let's go ahead and just make sure that worked. And in the output, I get 12. So that's good. Next, I'm going to go ahead and um, get the clock time from the lighting and put that into a loop and just set the street light. Um, if the day is if it's day, um, set it to off, and if it's night, just set it to on. All right, so I made a function to set the lights to a certain value, whether that be true or false, and then set the enable to true or false. And then I said I wanted to do a loop to check the time every second or so, but I actually don't want to run this function. Uh, every second, uh, I think I'd rather just use a bindable event. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by creating a bindable event in server storage. All right, I called it set lights, and I'm going to do game dot server storage dot set lights dot event connect function or er, connect set lights. There we go. All right, now to set up my uh, day cycle script, I'll call this day cycle. And then I'm just gonna do a normal day cycle, except uh, add an additional if statement uh, for when the lights are off and the time is um, night to set it to on. And if it's day and they're on, to set them to off. So I'm going to do that real quick. 
All right, so in my day cycle, I just added my um, setting minutes uh, after midnight uh, plus one every every frame in a loop, and I have a lights enabled boolean and a uh, reference to my set lights uh, event bindable event. So I just fire it right away to. Uh, well, I started at day, so my lights enabled start at false, and then I just fire it one time to turn them off. And then if the minutes is less than this or greater than that, it's nighttime. If the lights are not on, then turn them on. And if the lights, if it's day and the lights are on, then turn them off. And the street lights should be off right away. And they are. And now I'm going to go ahead and make the day cycle much faster. And they turn off. And then they turn back on at night. And then at day they turn back on or they turn back off. And it just endlessly goes like that. So there you have it. There's my uh, attempt at street lights. All right, this next one comes from Decease, and he says, if there's any way to stop the camera from shaking when the player is trying to move but is running into a wall, and he is referring to my camera shake script tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and open a copy of that right now. All right, so here I am in my bubble. Um, camera bubble tutorial and um, if I go ahead and exaggerate the X and Y components of it and then I go ahead and test it you'll see that it bubbles when I move around but uh, as soon as if I walk into the wall even though my character is not moving uh, as long as my move direction is greater than one my character hasn't loaded yet sorry about that but um, as long as I'm trying to move into the wall, it's still going to bobble because my move direction is, well, this whole script is basically based on the move direction. So what I'm going to try to do is um, multiply the uh, velocity of the player's torso um, into, into the, take it take account the velocity of the character's torso into each bobble component. Uh, in fact, I'll probably multiply it right here. So I'm going to do local torso. All right, so I've gone ahead and multiplied the, I've added the torso into my variables and I'm going to multiply the amount that I'm bobbling uh, times the t the magnitude of the torso's velocity, which is the speed that it's moving, and velocity is a vector three. So if I want to turn that back into, if I want to get a number value out of a vector three, I have to use magnitude to change it to a scalar number, and then just divide that by sixteen, and then multiply that scalar number by my original bobble. So if the player is moving at his maximum speed. Um, by default, it's 16 studs per second, so uh, I, that's why I divided by 16, so the magnitude will be 16, divided by 16, you'll get 1, so when the player is moving at his max speed, it'll be 1, so anything you multiply by 1 will be whatever it was. If the character is not actually moving at, at any speed, it'll be 0 divided by 16, which is 0, and then 0 times our bobble will give us a bobble of 0, so let me go ahead and test that and see how that turned out. Okay, so instead of doing the torso, I got an infinite yield on torso. Uh, my character is, of course, R16, or whatever it's called, R15, um, to make it, I'll do, instead of torso, I'll do root part because that one works on both. I could do head as well, but humanoid root part, 
and then instead of torso do root part. All right, let's go ahead and test that. All right, so I've still got my bobble now, but let's see what happens if I run into the wall. It comes to a stop. Pretty cool. Now, um, if you want to make this adjust to whatever the um, character's walk speed is at the moment, um, you'll probably, instead of 16, if you know what the number is, I guess you could put it there. Like, I knew that it's 16, so I put 16 here. If it was 32, I would put 32. But if you want it to be changing, uh, like if the walk speed changes from time to time, let's say you have a sprint key or something, uh, you probably just want to do humanoid dot walk speed. Okay, so that would be a little less prone to errors with uh, differences in walk speed. And then another thing you might want to do is do math dot clamp. Um, and then you want to make this whole thing the first parameter, comma zero comma one. That way, if the character is in a car, for example, I mean, you should really have it set to not do this when you're seated anyway, but um, if the character gets flung and he happens to be holding the W key and his uh, velocity's magnitude is much greater than the humanoid walk speed, uh, let's say the, his velocity is 32 and the walk speed 16, uh, this would end up being 2, but since we use math.clamp, and we clamp this number between 0 and 1, the the value will never go greater than 1, and it will never go um, less than 0. So those are just a couple precautions I would add as well. But of course, this doesn't really change anything here. Uh, it's still going to work as normal. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Uh, the point of it was to be educational on a f more fast-paced scale by doing a bunch of little things uh, in one video rather than a long, drawn-out tutorial with an intro and a setup and a, all of that. So I hope you guys like this idea, and let me know what you think. And until next time, uh, I'll see you guys later.